always wanted to catch that fish. I've always wanted to boat flip that fish. LTB is all in this. LTB is all in this. Hey, what's up, guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here on behalf of Lucky Tackle Box, and today we're going to be breaking down reaction strike, kick and jerk jerk bait. Let's break this puppy down. Let's break down the setup I'm using today. I like a 7 to a 7 foot rod. A long rod is critical for making long casts. Jerk baits usually aren't very heavy, so I like a very limber rod, something that's going to load up with a lighter bait and still make that long cast. Um, that being said, I'm usually using a moderate to moderate slow taper. It's a very limber rod. Bending directly in the middle is moderate. Bending even back beyond there is a slow taper, and then you have fast, extra fast right in the tip. I'm pairing that up with 12 pound fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon is extremely critical if you feel any change in your bait, you'll be able to feel if there's grass on there, you'll be able to feel that subtle difference very easily. That being said, I'm using it on a loose speed spool. It's a big spool, I have a lot of yardage, but the nice part is, and you don't have to have a spool specially designed for long range casting, but the level winds a little farther away from the spool, which gives you a little extra yardage on your cast. Really smooth. Speed of the reel doesn't really matter too much. You're retrieving this jerk bait by twitching, twitching, and you're picking up the slack. So anything from a 5.3 to an 8 speed reel doesn't really matter. What does matter is that you have good drag and you can pull it off pretty easily. The reason for this is a treble hook has multiple hook points. This is two treble hooks, so we have a total of six hook points. Each hook point is not huge, so you don't get a deep hook up on the fish. So allowing that fish to get it and be able to take drag and then you retrieve that line in between is critical for not tearing the hooks out of those fish. So how I like to retrieve a jerk bait is after I make that long cast, some people like to reel it down, but I usually start off with a jerk and then a pause. The pause is very, very critical for getting bit on a jerk bait. Usually you use a jerk bait in those colder, cleaner water to where the fish are more lethargic. And when they see it pause, it looks like a wounded bait fish. So I do that one pop and then I do that one, two, and I give it slack line again. At all times, I'm watching the slack of my line to see if all of a sudden the line jumps out. Then I'm a strictly reel into the fish and lean. That's how I get the hook set. On a jerk bait, you don't need to wham, set it home super hard. Twitch, twitch, you feel it load up, reel into it and lean on them. That limber rod is gonna get that fish for you. Now, one thing that I've noticed about the kick and jerk here is that the casting system is really nice. The weights shift to the back. So even for a lighter jerk bait, you're still gonna get some extra distance on your cast. That being said, a lot of jerk baits have three treble hooks. The cool part is the lips all the way up here and that first treble hooks back a ways, which is nice. When you're down there digging around rocks, the treble hook has a lot of protection with the front of that jerk bait. That being said, what I've noticed is a lot of the time I have to take big rips with jerk baits to get the action out of them. Well, my arm starts getting wore out at the end of the day and I'm doing this after working a jerk bait, but with this kick and jerk right here, I'm able to make subtle movements of the rod tip like this, little subtle jerks, and that bait gets a ton of action. I realize over jerking it, the bait's kind of losing control. Uh, oh, I catch them outside, how about that? Now I'm getting this bait down from three foot, probably all the way to about seven foot deep on that 12 pound fluorocarbon. If you want to fish it shallower, fish it on 15 or 17. And if you want to fish it deeper, drop down to something like 10 pound. And that's going to allow your bait to get down deeper or run it shallower. A side tip from that, if I'm casting up shallow and there's grass there, well, the bass live in the grass. You want it near the grass. But a lot of guys, they twitch it and they feel it in the grass, but they, they keep going, keep going, and you're carrying grass. One thing you could do is put slack in there and give it a wham wham. Two fast pops, but if you still feel like you're in the grass, raise your rod tip up and give it, just like you're popping a crankbait loose, bam, bam. Two upward snaps. After you do those two upward snaps, nine out of 10 times, it clears the hooks of any grass. Pause it right then, because it rips out of the grass, and now it's right in front of all those bass's face, and you would be amazed on how many upward popping it out of the grass and pauses, hookups I've had. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of when to fish this and where to fish this. Jerk baits tend to excel in colder, cleaner water. I'm out here fishing my lake behind my house right now. I got about three, three feet of visibility, and I really call that the maximal distance to start throwing a jerk bait. I like throwing a jerk bait where I could see 30 feet, I could see 20 feet, and the, the 
my limitation, if I can't see beyond three feet deep, I'm usually not throwing a jerk bait. Now that being said, colder, cleaner water jerk baits excel. I'm telling you, when that water gets below 55 degrees, that's jerk bait season. And the reason is that twitch and the pause, you're right there in their face. They see a hard bait sitting there. Very few people fish hard baits. You know, you can fish a lipless or a jerk bait, and that's pretty much your hard bait selection in regards to winter time. So winter, early spring, jerk baits excel. The targets I like to throw to are shallow, rocky areas or a rock wall. Rock always holds that little extra temperature and you're gonna find the closer you get to the rock, it's always a few degrees warmer. That being said, those bass are gonna conjugate to that area. They like to be next to deep water, okay, in the winter and early in the spring too, even before they start moving up to start looking for beds, they like to have deep water. If you're within 50 feet uh, distance down to about 25, 30 foot of water, and there's rocks within that same distance, more than likely it's going to hold bass and they will be catchable on a jerk bait at that point. Main lake points, rocky areas, always pay attention. When that sun comes up first thing in the morning, pay attention to what bank that sun is on because that bank, that water over there is going to become one or two degrees warmer. Then when evening time rolls around, you may have active fish pull up into that area and will more than likely come after a jerk bait just like this. Well guys, I'm Nick the Informative Fisherman and that's the Reaction Strike Kick and Jerk. I appreciate you watching this video. If you like videos like this, make sure to watch all of our other ones and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you next time and appreciate you watching.